Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do an Ant-Man 3 post-mortem. Mm -hmm. A post-mortem. Uh, because we're getting dueling headlines here. We've got some media outlets saying that uh, Ant-Man 3 was a massive flop. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it is continuing a, a thirsty phase four trend. Okay. And we've got other outlets saying that uh, Ant-Man and 3 did very, very well. Uh, domestically, but not well internationally, which is true. Yeah. But it did well domestically. It did better than the other Ant-Man movies, even though they didn't adjust for inflation. Well, what got, what got me was they keep saying, oh, it's going to break all kinds of records. And I'm like, what? The amount of people in row L on theaters on a Sunday at five? Yeah. You know, right. on a certain date? I mean, because it didn't even come in as high as Thor 4. That's not good. I mean, it did better than the Eternals. So, I mean, yeah. it hasn't sunk that low. No, but we're, we're look, um, especially with this one being a lead in to Phase 5 and, and Secret Wars and all of that, it, it frankly should have done better, I think. Uh, you know, but here we've got the rap saying that Ant Man 3's box office shows the limits of the post Endgame Marvel universe. Now, you're thinking it's all bad. It's not. They talk about how domestically, again, this one did okay. Yeah, it, uh, it did just do okay. It wasn't great. Like They keep trying to hype it up, but it really wasn't. Yeah, but they're also like, Marvel is going to have to get used to sub-billion dollar movies because you have to take China out of play. They're like, this movie did, true. did not do well in China. This is... Is this the first Marvel they've they've opened in China? I think since mm, did they do Spider Man there or no? Well, no. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that one didn't open in China. Yeah, I didn't even know because I can't even tell anymore. I can't keep track. Uh, now here's what you know. I actually think is going on. I think China is blocking the Marvel movies because they want you to go see China's own homebrew movies, which are making a ton of money, uh, and they're designed for Chinese audiences, and they don't want the influence of the West. Well, they're. Sometimes I can't blame them, though. Yeah, just some of this stuff, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But um, here's the thing. Like, China, um, Hong Kong, Disney, they actually have an Ant-Man ride. Yes. And it still didn't do very good. So what the rap is saying is, like, Disney gets needs to get used to these movies not doing nearly what they used to do. I think that that's going to be the case. And, and you know, like you said, China, I think other a aspects of it, people are tired of them. Yes. They are brand fatigue. Um, people checked out after the end of, you know, the first 10 years, you know, got with the M Avengers Endgame. Yep. They're like, I don't want to, it's too much time to invest. There's too much. And now you have TV shows and films. Yes. I just think people are overwhelmed and they're sick of it. And you honestly haven't been giving us good movies. So a lot of it has just been, um, and that's one thing I've noticed with the with the reviews another cog in the in the wheel it's, it's all it is it's like it feels like it's just another another stupid movie that's not its own thing it's just a stepping stone to something else yeah every marvel movie is a commercial for the next marvel movie and people are tired of whatever it. and and uh yeah the, the, i you know i didn't feel a lot of excitement for this one now some people went to go see it to be fair some people went to go see it and they said it was actually pretty good the critical score that was not good it was under yeah well the 50%. critical score you, you honestly have to throw out the window i mean let's i i think the truth lies in the middle usually yeah i think this is probably realistically like a 70 percent maybe yeah i think the truth in the middle i think it's like 70 75 i think that um especially with rotten tomatoes like I love how everybody else is review bombing when the critic score is high um, and the audience score is low. But when the critic score is low, it's just because that's how it is. Yeah. So we're going to talk. We're going to talk about this again. This is more of a postmortem um, and it depends on who you ask, whether or not it was a success. I, I guarantee you Disney expected, wanted a hell of a lot more money. I mean, Disney wants every one of their Marvel movies to, to break 200 million. They're going to spin it as a success, even if it wasn't. Right. But right. it really wasn't. I mean, it was a, it was a, eh. I mean, it wasn't the worst. It did way better than the Eternals. Yeah. But when it didn't even do as well as fourth as Thor four. Yeah. That's, I'm just like, yeah. eh, and I, I think it's going to drop off a cliff really quick. Cause we got cocaine bear coming this weekend. I think the Marvels is good. It works. Oh, I think the Marvels is not going to do well at all. And it's sandwiched between a bunch of really big movies. And I think mm -hmm. they deliver my personal opinion. So they have an excuse. Yes. I think they moved. They knew the Marvels was not going to do well. So they deliberately moved it and they, they moved it uh, kind of low key as they're seeing what the, the rollout's like for Ant-Man three. I think they're going to move it between a, a bunch of other big movies so they can say, yeah, this is why it failed. Well, that's what they did. Dune two comes out like yeah. before. Oh, all the misogynists went to Dune 2. That's that's all the man babies. Yeah, they, oh, they should have supported more women. Oh, well, you know, 
So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 295,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Almost 300,000. We want 300,000. Could you please subscribe so we can get the 300,000? Please. Won't you support starving YouTubers today? Anyway, here we come. Uh, here we come. Or here. Ready or not. <laughs> here we come. Ready or not. Boom. The rap. The rap. Right. Uh, Quantumania has garnered scores from critics and general audiences that nearly match the franchise lows posted by the Eternals with four. That's not good to have two, two or I three mean, movies in a row. Yeah, the critical that. scores aren't great on Eternals either. I'm talking about financially. The Eternals did much worse. Oh, yeah. Opening weekend. If yeah. we're going to be fair. It was under it was under 100 million. We do I try think. to be fair here, contrary to popular opinion. Yeah, a bunch of bigots and <laughs> bigoted fair bigots. Uh, with a 48% critical score on Rotten Tomatoes, a B on Cinema score, and a 3.5 out of 5 score opening. Okay, that's critical. But despite this, Quantumania has earned Marvel Studios its fifth straight 100 million plus domestic opening with 105 million three day, 120 million four day, beating the 71. Being Eternals. Being Eternals. It beat Eternals, everybody. That's wow. Give it up for, give it up for Marvel. And it beat Ant Man and the Wasp. Which. Very few people want to go see. You know why it beat them? Because Kang. Kang. People think. I'm going to tell you straight up. That's why it beat, you know, yeah. Ant Man, the, the 2018 one. They're like, Kang, he's that 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 blue face guy that has something to do with that Secret Wars thing that's coming in a couple of years. This is probably an important movie. We need to go see it. Even when you hear people review, most of what they're talking about, even the critics. Kang, Kang's awesome. The rest of the movie, eh. I, I have heard that. I have heard people said that he's actually very good. Um, so they said, yes, yeah, drawing in significant crowds due to Paul Rudd and Jonathan Majors as Kang. Kang, Kang is uh, why they're going. Yeah, so the interest among casual audiences who are key to hold over box office tools will likely take a hit due to the mixed word of mouth. But insiders at Disney... Trust Disney always. Point to the film's 84% okay. audience score. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now, uh, okay, no, now, now I question it. Yeah. Insiders at Disney point to the film's 84% audience score. The score that could be cheated the easiest on Rotten Tomatoes is the audience score. That's the one where they could just, you know, you could just put stuff in there. You don't have to have a ticket. Or they could, they could Disney can buy tickets and then just assign them to, you know, random accounts that are going to generate positive reviews mm -hmm. um the fact that they're the insiders saying well we did 84 percent audience see if you hadn't said that i'd have been like okay people are saying good things but now that you said that i'm going to question it because i've seen what you did well all oh, the theaters are sold out with captain marvel and then there's pictures of theaters that were sold out in quotes and there was like five people in them because where'd the tickets go oh because the you know they weren't real people who bought the tickets disney yeah i saw a lot of pictures of nearly empty theaters for ant-man too which is kind of i'm just weird. like 84 when the disney when disney insiders point out i'm like no nah, mm. Now, now I question it. If you hadn't put that in there, okay, I might, you know, mm -mm. now so, I question it. So here's here's what the the gist of the article basically is. They're, they're like Disney is oh thank God because that was that was something that they were telling the investors like hey we're going to get Marvel movies in China again everything's going to be fine we're going to get our oh yeah Marvel man and the Wasp Quantum Mania is going to China yeah right Yay. um I pulled I pulled some strings with the CCP yeah well it's not going well it seems like Marvel is a dead brand in China just like Star Wars. They said a more foreboding sign for the film's global box office is his extremely poor $19.2 million opening in China, more than 70% below the $66 million opening earned there by Ant-Man and the Wasp. And they're going to blame it on COVID? Uh, probably. I don't see anything about COVID in here. Well, I don't know. Because they said, yeah, Avatar did well. Yeah. They went to go see Avatar. People went to go see other movies in China and Chinese movies. They just yeah. didn't want to go see this one. Uh, they said the last six Marvel movies, yeah, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange, Skip Theaters. Now, the weird thing is, is Ant-Man, They again, they have a, an Ant-Man ride in Hong Kong. This is probably one of the reasons they got through. Yeah, so they're probably like, oh, hey, it's that thing that we got in the theme parks. But I'm like... I think it's Hong Kong. Is it Hong Kong or Shanghai? I think it's Hong Kong. I don't remember. It's now, one of the two. One of the parks over there. A anyway, um, the point being, like, it's not like Chinese audiences didn't have some familiarity with these characters, right? Because the other movies were out, the rides in the parks, if the parks are open, <laughs> you know, so they would know these characters and they still didn't go. They don't care. China doesn't care. But the, no, I don't think most people care. No. Most people are over Marvel. They're tired of Marvel. They don't care about Marvel. Yeah. 
Um, they said Avatar did really well in China. That's actually because it, it started know, out poor, but it did pick up. It did pick up. It's actually what, like the third biggest box office or something now. And yeah. that's because of the overseas market, um, which is kind of what happened with Pirates of the Caribbean too. We're like, hey, the last Pirates movie didn't do very well. It's like, yeah, but in China, it did It did really well. And that's kind of like here too. Like I, I personally don't know anyone who went to the theater to see Avatar 2. Like, I don't know anyone who went to the theater to see it personally, other than to review it or whatever. Like, I don't have people come to me and be like, my God, you have to go see Avatar 2. Nobody's doing that. But the movie's apparently making all kinds of money because overseas they no, love it. They, did they open? They didn't, did, they didn't do Thor Love and Thunder in no, they China. Didn't. Nope. Okay, so Thor Love and Thunder still beat it. Yeah. And that's, you know, and they didn't even have China. Yeah, so we're, somehow worse. Yeah, Thor Love and Thunder. Open to 144 million, finished with 343 domestic. They say Quantum Mania should be able to at least reach 225 million in North America. That's, that's not good. That's not great. Now, again, Ant Man and the Wasp didn't do that fantastic either, but this one is supposed to lead directly into Secret Wars. And people don't care. So the Mar- I think the Marvels is going to do significantly worse than this because nobody cared about the Ms. Marvel show. Uh, Brie Larson and everybody's over and um, Monica Rambeau was like, well, if you, you missed, you know, uh, WandaVision, you're not going to even know who right. she is. And honestly, it's been so long since WandaVision. You know, they've had too much of it. There was supposed, remember, this was supposed to come out Before last year and, it, and they pushed it back. Not only, it's going to be like 18 months back from where it was supposed to come out. Um that actually, yeah, it's supposed to come out uh, yeah, at the end of last year. So it's, we're talking a while. And, and people aren't going to even remember. They're not even going to care because there's been nothing really that remind them. They said at this point, Disney should just look at China as being uh, a bonus and not a reliable exactly. pillar. And they said that no uh, shit. they said the next Marvel movie that has a chance at being a, a huge hit is probably Guardians I 3. think Guardians is the best chance they have. Yep. Um, I don't think Marvels are going to do it. And obviously, Ant-Man and the Wasp aren't going to do it. But Guardians of the Galaxy 3 very easily could. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, I think Guardians 3 is going to do well. And actually, it looks pretty good. The trailer looks good. They're not low-key. Well, they are. They're low-key dissing the Marvels. Good. The MCU films that come out after Guardians 3 include the Marvels, Captain America New World Order, which is Falcon, right? Mm-hmm. And Thunderbolts. They're more focused on characters introduced or primarily developed after Endgame, making it less likely they will have built-in interest beyond the hardcore fans. Oh, you mean they're talking sense like we keep saying? Given how much these films play off each other, moviegoers who fell off the Marvel bandwagon may lose interest in getting back on, turning what has been the MCU's greatest strength into its Achilles heel. Oh what? my God, I feel like I'm in an echo chamber. <laughs> what? You can't say that. You must be a Nazi. Because only Nazis hate Marvel and Star Wars. I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, oh wait, what? Oh, God. So they're basically oh saying God. that this is, this is kind of a taste of what's to come. That Disney is going to have to get used to lower box offices for Marvel. It's not the moneymaker it was before. Oh, my God. Just like Star Wars. It's like somehow, Disney, you managed to squeeze the life out of two of the most profitable franchises in cinematic history in less than a couple of years. Good job. Good job. Take Mickey. skill. Good job. So we're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.